Hello everyone, Reza here with another Unreal Engine tutorial. In this short video, I'll demonstrate how to create a material blend using a Megascan. Hope you find this one useful. Let's get started. Here I am inside Unreal Engine. Now, what you need to have is a good resolution to begin with. So just make sure that what you bring into Unreal Engine, the geometry has got enough vertices because at the end of the day, you paint the layers of your material instance on vertices. If you have low resolution, you're not going to get any result. Now you have two options. One is to use your preferred 3D application. I'm using Maya, just a simple polyplane, and I smooth it, export it as FBX into Unreal Engine. Of course, another option you have is to do it inside Unreal Engine. You need to make sure that the modeling plugin is enabled, and then simply drag and drop a rectangle, resize it, and remesh the static mesh. That's it. Once that's done, you switch back to selection and you're ready to go. With that out of the way, let's open Quixel Bridge, Megascan, Quixel Bridge. So these three are the ones I've prepared. So let's have a look at them. I've got lawn grass, I have grassy soil and I have sparse grass. You can have two and um, I've picked three. One is going to be my base layer. The second one is going to be my mid layer and the last one is going to be my top layer. Now I've already downloaded them. So let's add them to my current scene to show you what I have in my current scene. I've added a folder called blend material. I put the result of the blend of these three inside this blend material. And of course I have a folder which um, I've imported the high resolution polyplane. Super simple. So let's uh, select these three and I'm just going to add them to my scene. You can see they have been added here. So I've got under surface on their mega scan, which is now a brand new folder. I have grassy soil, lawn and sparse grass. And by the way, the way that these are structured is within your preference. So if you wish to place those materials in a very specific order, then you definitely need to go through editor preferences. All right. Now with that out of the way, I'm not going to actually close this one just yet. I'm going to just minimize it. Now you can see those materials are in separate folders and I would like to see them all inside the content browser. You have two options. One is to change your view mode so you do not see the folders. So if I go to surface, now I do not see any folders. All I see is nodes inside the folder. So that gives you access to the materials. Another way of doing this, which I prefer actually is to use filters. So uh, with the main folder selected, I'm going to click on this three lines and I'm going to pick materials. All I have is the main materials. Now you need to select those materials in a very specific order and run create material blend. The first one that you pick is going to be your base. And the second one is going to be your mid and I'm holding down control. And the last one is going to be your top layer. You can choose whatever order you have in mind. I'm going to go and bring up Quixel Bridge again. And in here, there is a tiny sort of an icon, like an adjustment icon here. That is how you create material blend. I know it's a little bit obscure, but gets the job done. 
If I click on that, you've got few options to work with. The first one is auto populate foliage painter, which uh, it automatically switches you to foliage editor asset and it puts all of these material inside the foliage editor. Definitely something that I really don't want to do at this stage. The second one is if you have an object selected, you can just say, I'm going to bring it over. You can just say, apply the result to my selected material. You can just um, check that if you want. I'm going to drag and drop it manually. Now we've got mit master material override. And this uh, section allows you to choose your own custom master material instead of a default master material provided by the plugin. And of course, the last one is going to create the material blend, names it for you. In my case, actually, I prefer blend material. So I'm just going to leave it as is. I might actually go and change the destination path to my blend material folder that I've already made. That is all good. So remember, that's where I'm going to check the result with the settings and with the orders uh, that I've selected the materials. Let's click on create material blend. Now on the surface, not much has happened. But if I go ahead and minimize, and I'm going to get rid of the filtering right here. If I go to material blend, now I have my blend material and you can see the sparse grass is the one that the first one I picked and that is going to be my base layer. Now I can simply go in here and drag and drop and there I have my base layer. Now this is not a master material, it's actually a material instance with lots of controls. If I double click on it, you can see that I have uh, general global parameters. If I go ahead and deselect that number two is anything and everything to do with base layer. And then anything and everything you adjust with regards to your middle layer and all the controls you have when it comes to your top layer and the rest of them is actually pretty generic something that you see in an empty material instance so i'm just going to close that and previewing i'm just going to close that now first things first this is super big so you can always um, start with um, number two where you adjust the strength of the normal you change the rotation of your image or you can go base layer tiling offset. And that's something that I need to change right now. So I'm going to change that to something like three and three. So it looks slightly better. Now you may say Reza, okay, um, in that case, if I go and enable um, mid layer, how will I be able to see it on the material? Well, that's where you need to actually switch from selection to a different mode to be able to paint your middle layer and your top layer. Let's go to the next chapter. All right, I'm going to go in here into my mode and switch to mesh paint shift four. Um, I can actually go in there and dock it for now. You can see I have a few options. I can select, I can paint, I can swap, I can fill the entire thing with a particular layer. Probably the main one would be paint actually, where that gives you your visualization, what you're looking at. What you're looking at right now is actually not just R, G and B because you are painting on red channel, green channel and blue channel and each channel represents a layer. But if it's set to off, instead of looking at green, blue and red, you're actually looking at the final result. Then you have the size of your brush and then you have the strength of your brush, the fall off. Now in vertex painting, what I would like to do is to press X 
just to be able to swap i can press x again you can see how i'm swapping paint and erase i would like to turn off the paint right now because i'm working based off of the channels if i just ever so slightly move this to the side so i reveal more channels uh, all i want to paint is red now remember red is your mid layer green is your top layer is your material blend has got puddle and water then blue will be your puddle layer so kind of keep that in mind when you switch back and forth between different material layers that's really all there is to it and all you need to know about painting side of things i'm just going to ever so slightly get closer to the surface so i select paint again and i can start painting so see that i'm now revealing my mid layer okay you may say reza yuck your mid layer is too big and those lines are super sharp that's no problem at all i can just drag it bring it to the side i'm just going to sort of maximize that let's go into the mid layer first things first i'm just going to look after the tiling i'm going to set that to three and three so it makes sense a little bit now remember that blend control that we talked about that's where you actually use that so base middle layer blend control i'm going to enable it expand it you can change the blend amount how cool is that so it actually eats in to the and sort of neighboring vertices blend contrast you can see how now the base layer is now taking over we're looking at the fall off a little bit and blend amount now from this point onward you can actually start adding uh, what you want and remember you have strength as well so if i go and dial down the strength i'm actually gradually but surely create certain material here really really cool now same rule applies if you want to use top layer right here so i know for a fact that my top layer is going to be big so why don't i go in there and just tile that x and y ever so slightly and that's the beauty of having material instance everything is right in front of you and then I'm going to go and deselect red and enable green. And from now on, anything and everything I paint is going to be my top layer. And I've got all the maps set up for me, including ambient occlusion. So if I go in here, I'm just going to adjust my camera ever so slightly. If I go in here and now paint, you can see now I'm painting my top layer again the problem is it's really smooth there's not much blend in that case i'm going to go top layer blend and i'm going to start adjusting those attributes and i always suggest that you actually go back and sort of redo some of these so for example now i'm going to go with my layer right here and start adding bits and pieces then i'm gonna go into green and this time i can actually press x and start erasing so i can go and adjust my strength a little bit i can go adjust my size brush size a little bit and start chipping away from what i have like so to add a little bit of randomness so you can see how easily you can actually play around with um, these brushes and just customize your work. To create puddle, all the way down we have use puddle layer. And right now we don't have any puddle menu. As soon as you click that, you have blend, base, middle, top and puddle and as i said to paint puddle you use a blue channel so if i go in here and just now paint blue i'm now painting a puddle of water 
Now, I'm not sure if that's kind of something that you can see, probably changing the light ever so slightly so you can sort of see the wetness actually around the puddle. And you can go in here and change um, certain attributes on this puddle right here. You can actually change the albedo of the puddle if you want, make it some sort of a sort of greenish looking ever so slightly. You can go uh, change the opacity. So as soon as you increase the opacity, obviously, then you will see that albedo coming through a little bit. So that's something that useful if you want to create murky water, that is quite useful. You can um, apply Fennel to it. And at the same time, you can always add to your puddle right here using the size and strength, which is quite useful. So I can sort of lower the strength to add wetness to the soil, but not actually create the water. So pretty um, useful stuff right here. Liquid roughness, where it actually sort of makes this kind of fading away, or you can go all the way um, to negative side and make that super reflective. Now I can kind of see the clouds in the reflection. And that is pretty much it. That's all there is to it, really. And from this point onward, you start just adding and tweaking based on the brief that you have. All right, that should do the trick. I hope you find this uh, video useful and use blend materials using Megascan in your projects. Until the next video, see you guys later.